Now this, visually, is my favorite episode. Hello there troopers and welcome back to General Kenobi's Bunker. Thank you so much for joining me for the last review for Tales of the Jedi, episode 6, Resolve. If this is your first time here on the channel, we like Star Wars around here. We do a lot of toy hunting, toy reviews, the occasional TV episode review like today. So if that's something that you enjoy, please consider subscribing to the channel. So this is the last episode for Tales of the Jedi and the third in the Ahsoka arc. Okay, so let's jump right into it. We start off in Naboo in one of my favorite scenes in all of the movies, uh, especially in the prequels. And this is actually a uh, recreation of what we saw in Revenge of the Jedi. This is the funeral for Padme Amidala, which I thought was awesome to see in animated form. They nailed it, okay? They they did a really good job recreating the scene. Um, look at the details. You'll notice the, um, the Japur snippet that Anakin gifted her during episode one. And again, I thought they did a really uh, good job in mimicking the... The setup for the scene in Revenge of the Sith, but the look of Padme is the one during Clone Wars, so it makes perfect sense. Uh, I don't know, I just like the mashup of the two. And of course, we got slight modifications. We have Mon Mothma and Bail Organa in the crowd, and then uh, Bail notices somebody in the crowd, which is basically Ahsoka. Again, we didn't see Ahsoka in Revenge of the Sith because she didn't exist, technically. Uh, so I thought this was really cool the way they take a scene we know, we know very well, we've known for almost 20 years, but they add this little hint that just make it cohesive to the story that now we know. And so after noticing her, um, Bail Organa basically approaches Ahsoka as she's leaving and she tells him, hey, there's nothing you could have done here. Why did you even come? And so she just tells him she was my friend. Okay, um, you know, there's nothing really tactical about this decision. It's just the way it is. You know, I, she was my friend and I wanted to be here for her. Then they get, um, they need to move on because there's a couple of clone troopers, uh, now stormtroopers technically, I guess, uh, because this is just after the rise of the Empire, that are doing a patrol, patrol and then uh, they notice them. So they move on to... Uh, this beautiful scene that uh, that I've enjoyed quite a bit seeing Abu again, okay? Uh, we haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, that is one of my favorite aspects in the prequel trilogy, especially in The Phantom Menace. The portrayal of Naboo I thought was exceptional. And so they did a good job of recreating some of those iconic buildings and the look and feel to it um, in this episode. And so Bail Organa is basically talking to Ahsoka, telling him, telling her that there might come a time, you know, when they need to uh, stay in contact. He gives her a communicator to basically stay in touch. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm done. You know, I, um, I don't, I don't think I can fight anymore. I'm, 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 I'm tired. And so um, the clone troopers, you know, uh, catches up with them. She hides before they can see her. And so he is basically telling the clone troopers what, She's trying to tell her, right? And she's saying, he is saying, if you need anything, do not hesitate to call me. Uh, we'll be in touch, you know, all of that. To what the clones are kind of put off. They're like, okay, I guess. Um, and so they just take him away, you know, they escort him back. Uh, he is a senator, so, you know, they can't really do anything like detain him. But um, Ahsoka leaves and we see that she's still traveling at this point with Rex. And I thought it was cool they were actually traveling on a Y-Wing. Um... Which makes sense, you know, it's a small bomber, uh, but it does have a hyperdrive, so... And I thought it was cool, you know, Rex is still wearing his armor and everything, you know. It, this is very close to the end of the Clone Wars. Probably, you know, just a, just a few days after they survived uh, on board the Jedi. And then, uh, we, we fast forward uh, X amount of time. We don't really know, it's probably a few years. And Ahsoka is basically working as a, as a farmer right but uh there's an accident and some uh some hay falls onto another worker and she uses the force to basically push them away from her uh nobody else notices but 
the worker does. And so she starts befriending her and, you know, invites her to uh, have, you know, lunch with them. Uh, they're all complaining about the empire, especially the old man, saying that they keep right raising the, the quotas and the prices of things. And so they're, they don't have anything uh, nowhere near a profit as they did before. Uh, the younger guy basically says, well, you know, they brought peace and order to the galaxy. So it, it's got to come with a price. And as long as you're a law abiding citizen, you have nothing to fear from the empire. So he's he's obviously, you know, more of an empire sympathizer. Um, but then he overhears um, Ahsoka and his sister, which is the worker she saved. Um, and she calls Ahsoka a Jedi master. To which Ahsoka says, no, don't, don't ever say that again. You know, don't, don't put that on me. But, uh, she's like, well, I'll keep it secret. Um, of course he overhears. And so the next day, Ahsoka and the, the worker, they leave off to basically sell what they, um, cultivated. And, you know, they're coming back at night to the village, uh, complaining that they couldn't even get half of the price from the last harvest, you know, things are getting so bad, et cetera, et cetera. And that's when they notice that the whole village is on fire. And lo and behold, there's an inquisitor there. So the young guy basically called the empire saying that there was a Jedi uh, at the village. And obviously the empire responds with an inquisitor. This inquisitor looks dope. Okay. I think it's my favorite Inquisitor we've seen so far. The mask, the cape, the Empire symbol to you know on the sides. He is wielding, you know, the classic Inquisitor uh, lightsaber, double bladed, all of that. Uh, but man, he looks so menacing. His voice was awesome. Um, he just looked incredible. And the other thing that visually, you know, hit me when I was watching this episode was the fire. For some reason, at least to me, the fire looks amazing on this episode on the background. And so Ahsoka, you know, gets there um, and he says, well, somebody told me there was a Jedi here and I haven't found one. Ahsoka's like, yeah, I, I guess I'm the Jedi. And he, you know, he tries to kill the young guy with the lightsaber. Ahsoka moves him out of the way with the force. And he stares at her. And first of all, Look at this guy, okay? He, I mean, he looks menacing, all right? He just screams evil. But he actually recognizes Ahsoka, and he's like, oh, this can't be. You're supposed to be dead. He's like, maybe I'm the one getting a reward uh, for bringing in Ahsoka Tano. And so he ignites, you know, his lightsaber, double-bladed now. And remember, Ahsoka doesn't have a lightsaber at this point. Not yet, anyway. Um... And so she's basically unarmed, uh, but she still has the force, right? And uh, look at that fire on the background. I just, I don't know. There's something about it that I really, really enjoyed the way it looks on this episode. So Ahsoka, barehanded, you know, basically uh, dodges the, the lightsaber strikes, grabs it from him, and then strikes him down with his own lightsaber. And so... It would seem that he hit the Inquisitor on the on the head or on the face. So we see his mask just fall to the ground. And I was hoping to see somebody underneath the mask, somebody that we knew, right? Like Barry's Ophi or something like that. Um, that would be uh, the connection to... Uh, basically, it would be somebody that can recognize Ahsoka Tano just by looking at her. So we didn't get to see who was underneath the mask. Uh, you know, the body just falls and, and the mask just deflates. And so Ahsoka tells the villagers, that's it. You can't stay here. Um, she decides to call for help. A Corvette shows up. And of course, it's Bail Organa, um, who basically takes the villagers as refugees. And then... Um, Ahsoka basically tells him, hey, I'm ready to get back into the fight. Bail Organa tells him, things have only gotten worse. Are you sure? And she's like, yeah, yes, I am. So 
This episode actually generated a little bit of controversy because uh, it seems to modify events that were already portrayed, already uh, known uh, from Ahsoka's timeline, you know, at, at this point in the story. And that comes from the 2016 novel Ahsoka, which basically tells what happened, you know, during the Siege of Mandalore, Order 66, and after that. Um, and I haven't read the novel, but, you know, I know some of the key points. Basically, she was hiding out like she is here in the short uh, film, and but she was actually protecting a Force-sensitive child. She does get found out by an Inquisitor, but I believe it was the Sixth Brother. And now... Um, she actually ends up taking the red kyber crystals from his lightsaber. She purifies them into white uh, kybers, and that's where her new lightsabers come from, uh, the ones that she uses in the Rebels uh, TV show. And so there's there's differences, um, you know, in, uh, in the sense that, for example, Bail Organa did not know that she was alive, not until um, almost the very end of the book. And so things like that. Um, now, Filoni was involved with, uh, you know, some of the consulting for the for that novel. So I'm not entirely sure why he chose to go this route. But I think, you know, uh, in the overall, people will refer to this uh, as the new canon as opposed to the novel. Because, again, people tend to go with what is visually presented in TV shows or Clone Wars and animated Uh over comic books and books with um, with less audience, I guess, you know, in terms of numbers. So I thought it was a good story. Um, we see her basically come back into the rebellion, uh, which we know she does because she, so she shows up as full crew. There it is, troopers. What did you guys think about this last episode for Tales of the Jedi? I absolutely loved going back to Naboo. Uh, like I said, that's one of my favorite parts about episode one and the whole sequel, uh, prequel, sorry, trilogy um, locations. Um, I loved seeing the funeral again. It just kind of made sense. All right. And I do like the way that, you know, Filoni intertwines Ahsoka into the stories that we already know and to the scenes we've already uh, have seen, you know, in theaters in live action. So I just did. He did a he did a good job. So let me know down in the comments. What did you guys think about this episode? I will say visually again, I think I enjoyed this one the most. I need an action figure based on that Inquisitor, whatever his name designation is. Um, Black Series, the vintage collection, I'll take it, okay? Uh, he looks amazing. He sounded awesome. Uh, again, too bad he was dispatched, you know, so quickly. But let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite part of the episode? Uh, did you enjoy the story? Did you think we sort of already knew what was going to happen? Uh, did you like seeing the funeral again? You know, let me know about that too. Also, please do not forget to hit the like button on this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much if you already have. I would also greatly appreciate it if you share the content with people you think would enjoy it. Thank you again, and I'll catch you on the next one.